This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. One of the most famous and beloved cathedrals in uh, Venice, Italy is called the Pietà. It's famous for a couple of reasons. The first is uh, La Rosso Prete, the, the Red Priest, otherwise known as one of the great uh, composers of all time, uh, Antonio Vivaldi. Uh, Vivaldi used to work with orphans there, and he had choirs, and he composed all his music. You can pretty much hear the Four Seasons <laughs> almost any night of the week, even today. But the church is also famous because if you walk over to the side, to the east side of the building, you'll see a kind of mail slot, but we're talking a mail slot of 500 years ago built in, but it's not for postcards and junk mail. This was the place where women who had children that they couldn't bring up or didn't want could place the babies to be rescued by the priests and, and by the church and to be brought up or adopted. Uh, now, as far as I know, in Vancouver, we don't have such buildings anymore, to which we can probably say, well, thank goodness. But we do have lots of adoption. I found myself the other day, for some reason, just wondering, we never hear about adoption. It seems to be a very quiet subject. So I invited the right person who will know all about it, and that's Kathy Lopson, who is the Adoption Services Administrator for Family Services of, of uh, Greater Vancouver since 1928 unbelievable <laughs> yeah so let's start with it. why is this such a quiet subject i mean there's there, i guess there's not there's not much controversy about it but why are we very quiet about this well i i i think that when people are are um, wanting to create families I, I i think most people have ideas when they want to have a family about you know we're going to have the romantic idea of of um, having a baby and and going on with with our lives being parents and and I think what what sometimes might happen if families are faced with infertility issues yes um, then it becomes a little bit uh, a, a, there there's there's more issues that that crop up when when families may be facing difficulty getting pregnant, um, difficulty being able to have have children, uh, biological children. So sometimes it it may be um, families may have concerns around being able to um, look at alternate ways to create families. Many, many couples get together, uh, heterosexual couples get together uh, with the, I think, reasonably natural expectation that they're going to create babies. They're going to bring more people into the world, especially they carry their own name and mm -hmm. look a little like them and so on. Uh, and I'm guessing, I'm just imagining that if the subject of infertility starts sitting there like the big pink elephant in the middle of the room, that could end a marriage or two. It, it may. In, in some cases, it, it can. Yeah. Um, and it, some families, there are, there are issues around really the importance of being able to have a child biologically. Oh. And I think in the, in the past, many you know, generations ago, it, families were, were um, created in a, in a way that, you know, if, if let's say, uh, a male child was born, yes. um, that, was, that was revered. And, and sometimes with, you know, if a, a female child was born, maybe 
there, there were some concerns. Oh, we still have this as a big, actually, this is a, a political issue even <laughs> right here in Canada. Let's not go there. That's a whole thing about knowing what the fetus is and, and having abortions because we don't want uh, girl babies. That's a whole, mm -hmm. yeah. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is that in, on any given day in this province, we have roughly a thousand children waiting for adoption. That's that's correct. Yeah. So there, who are they? There are a lot of children. There's there's different kinds of adoption. Yes. Uh, different kinds of children available uh, to be to uh, for us to find permanent families for. And yeah. and in British Columbia, there are um, there's the Ministry for Children and Families, right. which has children that are in the care of the ministry permanently. So. Many of those children would be what um, what we would call BC's waiting children, and and those are children that, um, for whatever reason, their parent couldn't care for them. Maybe they um, they the children came into care uh, for reasons of neglect, or um, the parents just weren't able to to care for them. They they couldn't parent them properly. Do, do we have a lot of incidents these days? I'm guessing that we don't of outright abandonment? Um, there would be the odd case that children would be abandoned where it would come to the forefront of, of let's say the media and yeah. a few years ago there were uh, there were some children or uh, infants there was an infant I remember abandoned at a bus stop in Vancouver oh, yeah. Yeah. and that hit the media I, I, I know that children are abandoned well, that but one we can blame on TransLink. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Those fares keep going up. Yeah. But the the children that that are abandoned, and and again, maybe a parent is not um, uh, able to to care for the child, or maybe they they go out and for whatever reason their lifestyle is such that they forget to come home. Well, you Those can also see, you can also see the the sad uh, occasion of a young woman who, for whatever reasons, poverty, drug addiction, whatever the case, is just overwhelmed by the sight of this screaming mm -hmm. little person that they're supposed to now take care of. Mm -hmm. And you can just see some, it probably doesn't happen as often, but you can just see someone going, oh my God, what mm -hmm. am I supposed to do now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Par parenting, I, yeah. I mean, any, any of us that are parents, yeah. parenting is really hard work. Absolutely, And, and yeah. especially if let's say someone is facing an unplanned pregnancy or yeah. a real you know unexpectedly they find themselves pregnant and in in adoption we would look at going over all of their options f with them if they came let's say to an adoption agency or even yeah. if they came to the ministry for children and families a and you must have people coming to your offices uh, not necessarily your desk but your offices who are uh, uh, young women or, or women of any age who are expecting and saying, look, I, I'm not sure that I can take care of this child. Right. Yes? Yes, that's that's correct. And, so you're and involved in the counseling of where do we go next, what do we do next? We are. Okay. And, and sometimes if, if a, a woman or even a couple is facing an unplanned pregnancy, they'll come to an adoption agency or to a social worker in the ministry and say that, you know, I'm not really sure what I want to do. Um, Even maybe, a couple. I'm surprised to hear that. Maybe I'd like to. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to explore adoption, but yeah. I'm really still not sure whether or not that's the the route I want to go. So, we go over different kinds of options for for family. So you know, looking at well, maybe they might want a parent. And right now, if they come to an agency and they've they've just found out they're pregnant, and they they weren't expecting to be pregnant, it could be. Um, something for for them to think about. Maybe they're 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 in crisis at that moment, and just to kind of sit back with a social worker and talk about what what this really means and what this might involve. They may come to the conclusion after speaking with us that in fact they do have the ability to be able to parent a child, but maybe they don't. So then we would look at: Are there any? Um, any relatives that might be interested in helping yes. you out or parent this does child. The, does the government in, in any of its many forms, human forms, do any of the officers of the government ever find themselves actually saying to a couple or to a, or to a person, you know, 
I, I really don't think you're equipped to parent this child. Well, I, 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 I'm going to guess it doesn't happen very often, but does it happen sometimes? I, I think that if, if a government official has made that, yeah. made that decision or come to that conclusion, yeah. then most likely the child would have been removed from that parent's care if they uh -huh. really feel that they would not, um, they would really put that child in danger or the child would be at risk to be with that with that parent. In an adoption agency, uh, although I'm a social worker, yes. I don't have the delegation to be able to, to say or to apprehend a, yes. a child. The only way that a child comes into where, where I would become the legal guardian of that child would be if a birth parent um, will willingly and, and of their own free will place that child with a parent, with a family that um, that we had approved. Are, are we fortunately finding as the years go by that more and more situations around adoption are thought out and planned and not we're not having as many instant immediate crisis situations, intervention situations as we did years ago? Certainly with adoption, the licensed adoption agencies here in British Columbia and, yes. and uh, of that there's four of us. Ah. We started out when the British Columbia um, government licensed adoption agencies. Initially there were seven licensed adoption agencies oh. serving families in BC. Yes. And, and since that time, which was 1996 when, we, when agencies got licensed, we're now down to four because, licensed because agencies. Because three of you adopted three others? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, some of the, the agencies had to, had to close or chose yeah. to close um, their doors. And um, one, of the, one of the things that is uh, definitely happening in, in adoption today is there are uh, fewer options for families in terms of inter-country adoption, which yeah. we're involved with. That's something I, we, we have to break away in a minute or so, but just off the top of your head, are most adoptions local, local, or, or are many, many people seeking to adopt children from far away? Well, we had, I brought a yeah. few statistics. Sure. And last year, last fiscal year, between all the licensed adoption agencies, we had uh, 182 placements, so yes. 182 children um, were Found joined families. with families uh, yes. that, that were adopting. And of that 182, there were only 44 domestic adoptions. So those are children oh, really? that were adopted within BC. So the majority oh. of adoptions that families are completing with licensed agencies yes. are um, Intercountry adoptions. We have to break away, but are you telling me you, you stress the word license? Are you telling me that there are unlicensed adoption agencies? No, that if there yeah. are, they're illegal. They're illegal. <laughs> yes. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. We'll just take a little break. Our guest is Kathy Lobson with Family Services, and her entire work is concerned with adoption. Uh, just a, a moment for you to uh, uh, check out our website at davidburner.com. We welcome your comments, as always, and a chance for the lovely people who sponsor this program uh, to say hello. And these are the folks that help us bring this program to you here on Shaw Community Television Cable 4. Back in a minute. This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. We're back with our guest Kathy Lobson from uh, Family Services of Greater uh, Vancouver Adoption Services Administrator and the subject is adoption. So uh, 
I, I don't know why, but, but for some reason or other, uh, when I think of adoption these days, I often think about interracial adoption because we see so many interracial families. Of course, we see what, I mean, uh, 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 people of opposite sex have been uh, sharing uh, uh, precious bodily fluids <laughs> since time began, but they haven't been getting married since time began, and more and more, uh, uh, people of different races are getting married. Uh, uh, so now we're seeing adoptions across racial lines. Is this, it, what's your experience? Are people basically saying race doesn't matter? Are many people saying that? <clears throat> I, I, I believe that, um, that many of the families that, that we see um, yeah. are, are most definitely multiracial families. Uh -huh. and. Uh, many of the the children that they are they are adopting are not necessarily they, they're also multiracial. So, for example, uh -huh. you may have families that um, are are multiracial as a couple, and then they may decide to adopt, uh, for example, a child, uh, or they may have adopted a child from China. Yes. And and then they may decide, well, maybe because China is, is very slow right now in terms of um, children coming through adoption. Um, they Why? Would, Why is it slow? It's, it, it used to be very, very predictable and very... Um, is, it, is it the bureaucracy? Uh, I, one of the things that we've been told is that there are more families in China that are adopting the children locally. Oh, okay. So well, great. They're not, right. the, you know, yep. the children are not necessarily yes. leaving leaving China, so so some of the families instead of going to China may decide to go to Ethiopia, for example, um, and so then you may have a, a family then is that the makeup is that the one child is from China, one child might be from from Ethiopia, and maybe they've decided to adopt again, and they'll have another child that's from BC that maybe is. Caucasian. And then you have all these interesting challenges, not only uh, uh, putting up with the neighbors and mm -hmm. so on, but, but who may have different ideas of their own, but also uh, uh, helping the child have a sense of we're your mom and dad and we love you, but also you have a whole other culture and, and acknowledging that and paying tribute to that whole mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, 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 that's a challenge, and it, it's interesting and, and kind of fun if you're up for it. Mm -hmm. But it's a challenge. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the things that we've really tried to do, as as agencies that are working with families, and along with the Adoptive Families Association of BC, we really recognize that families are created in different ways, and and of there's course, all different yeah. kinds of of families. So. It's really important for us to be able to, as professionals in the adoption community, to be able to educate families, and and uh, have them have the, the the necessary tools to be able to um, not only maybe deal with with issues that might come up, learn that they, they'll um, have tools to be able to deal with maybe their own feelings and be able to talk about their their feelings and. Um, Plus, I think being in the Lower Mainland, maybe not so much throughout, you know, in some of the smaller communities of British Columbia, but here in the Lower Mainland, I think we're very, Pretty very diverse community. fortunate because yeah, we yeah. are very diverse, and yeah. um, it, it's it's been really wonderful for for families that are, um, you know, adopting children from other countries well, and becoming multiracial. Well, families. even apart from adoption, I mean. Uh, the blend. Both my children, who are both in their forties, uh, have blended families. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so people are. You know, you've got two, and I've got three, and then now we got five kids. Mm -hmm. It's sort of thing. That, that's there's a lot of that. Yes. Right. There is. Okay. There is. Do some of those people adopt each other's kids? They can. Yeah. They can. Does that there's, happen sometimes? Yes. Yeah. yeah it, it can, and and yeah. uh, adoption of of by step parents is really quite common. It is. And they're yeah. under the adoption legislation in British Columbia. You can also adopt an adult, like adult, an adult could adopt an adult. I'm adopting a cameraman, <laughs> <laughs> but only if he's available by next week. <laughs> I have other plans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about 
gay and lesbian adoption, is that, is that a, a big issue or is it a difficult issue or is it just something you, you find yourself dealing with regularly? I, I think yeah. um, our legislation, I, I really believe that, that the British Columbia legislation on, of adoption is very uh, forward thinking. I, I don't very, know what the legislation is. We, we're, when we look at, when we have to deal with all sorts of other uh, adoption legislation across the country, yes. across the, the states and, and, and in other countries, one of the things with the BC legislation is that the, the criteria to adopt is you have to be over the age of 19 and you have to be um, you have to be a resident of British Columbia. So those are the only two requirements. Oh. And, and so you, you, you can be married, you can be single. Oh, you, you can, can adopt when you're single. You can adopt sure. when you're okay. single. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. you can be a same-sex yeah. family. Yeah. You can be a grandparent. Um, there's no age restriction. And, and are, uh, that's the could be, but are all of these things actually being played out? Yes, uh -huh. yes. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Good. Yeah. Why not? It, it um, really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about open versus closed adoption. For for the longest time, uh, children who discovered at some age or were told at some age that they had been adopted really could not reach back I into the archives and find out where they came from and who their birth parents were and so on. But that's changed. Mm -hmm. So it's, tell us how it's, it's changed. It's, it's changed a lot. And yeah. In in BC, I think around 1991, the uh, the legislation started to change, and there was there was pressure put on the government um, by a lot of the adoption community, in in wanting to look, at being able to access uh, their their birth family information. And so one of the things that, that happened were records became open and people were able to access their information. Um, in, and BC, again, was, very, um, was, was really leading in, in Canada on their legislation to open the records. If you had, if you had 10 uh, children who are now age 20 mm -hmm. and had been adopted at a young age, out of the ten, how many would you say have an urgent sort of need to fill in this identity gap, and how many are just just fine the way things are? It it's really individual. I I know um, many ad, ad, adopted persons who are adults now. Many of them talk about. Um, some of them have a real need to find out that information and some of them are just fine without finding out that information. Yeah, yeah. So it, it varies uh, on, on, and it's very individual on um, what, what fits for that person. What's the, what's the oldest child or person you've ever adopted out to a family? Um, 15? T teens, 16, yeah. 17. Wow. Mm -hmm. That must be an amazing thing, an amazing experience for someone who's what been living in foster homes or well a lot of times the older children yeah. that are being adopted yeah. can be relative adoptions uh -huh. so they may have been living in their in their home country and then they're being adopted by relatives here oh you could have some dreadful untoward thing mm -hmm. like their parents are killed in a car crash mm -hmm. and suddenly they're, they're they don't have mm -hmm. uh, caretakers for yeah. them yeah yeah and then here in British Columbia on with the with the ministry oftentimes the older kids, um, you know, older teens, yes. are, are not, um, it's more difficult for, for those children to be, uh, for, for families to be found for those children. Uh, but I know that there's, a, there's been a real push uh, by the ministry to look at teen adoption. Um, if you had a magic wand, how would you change the system? What, what has to be better? Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like we're doing a fairly good job at this. Uh, but what, what, if you were running the world, what would you do to make make the system a little better? Oh, just one or two things. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, I I think that there there it it would be nice to be able to um, grant everyone's everyone's wish <laughs> yeah. to be a parent. Yes. Um, but 
if I, if I, I had a magic yeah, wand, yeah. I would really like to be able to do that. Yes. Um, but but in reality, um, I, I I think what I would like to do is maybe be able to. Um, have a, a smoother time. I know that paperwork and, and yes. documentation is really important. We do police checks. We, we do, do police things like checks. That? Yeah, we do okay. criminal yeah. Rec, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. checks with the ministry yeah. and reference checks, medical yeah. checks. Sure. But but I think in in terms of some of the uh, some of the bureaucracy, uh, which a lot of times is important because we we want to ensure, for example, with intercountry adoption that we're not. That children are not being trafficked. Yes, so of we want to make yeah. sure that a child is is certainly legally free to be adopted, and um, so I think, I think, if if some of those bureaucracies could be um, better put in place in terms of the way that uh, the the families are, um, I think it would be better if they were smoother run and if right. there was enough infrastructure in some of the. Uh, in some of the countries that are, are uh, yeah. that we're working with. Kathy, thank you. I can tell that you're a caring, compassionate person and that you have a lot of practical wisdom. And so I think we're very lucky to have you and people like you doing this work. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, Kathy Lopton, uh, Adoption Services Administrator for Family Services of Greater Vancouver. Now next week, uh, I'm uh, winging down to San Francisco just to fool around and see some friends. So we're going to run a repeat show, and that will be David Diamond, the amazing director of Theatre for Living, which for years was called Headlines Theatre. So we'll rerun that. And then the week after that, my very first guest on this program, 85 or 86 shows ago, was Gary Mason from the Globe and Mail, and he will join me. We'll talk about people like Mike Duffy and Pamela Wallen and a few folks you've probably heard of. Thanks for being with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again here soon on Shaw Community Television, Cable 4. Good night. Mm -hmm.